Alright, I'm going to make this super clear for you guys. Today, we would like to answer the question that why is that when we are doing definite integrals, the so-called dummy variable doesn't matter? So what's a dummy variable? Well, let's have a look right here. When we have a definite integral, let's say going from A to B, and we have some function f of x, f of y, f of z, f of t, etc, etc. Let's just put f of t right here, and then on the outside, I'm going to have dt. In this case, the t right here is an example of a dummy variable. This right here is the same as if we say the integral going from a to b, f of, well, you know it, the u substitution, so then let's just go ahead and put on u. So f of u, du. So for this one, u will be the dummy variable for this definite integral. Why are they the same? Well, let's take a look at the picture. So let's graph the function f of t. So y is equal to f of t. Here is the y-axis, it's always vertical. And then when we have the t, that will tell us the horizontal axis is t, not x, because we're using t right here. And let's just say the function looks like this. And let's say we want to go from A here and then B here. So this integral here will represent this area. Cool. So this area is just the integral going from A to B. And then we have f of t dt. And that's going to give us a number. All right. Next, I'm going to graph f of u. And uh, you know what? When we graph y is equal to f of u, the only difference is that the horizontal axis will be labeled as u because that's the letter that we're using. And this is still the y-axis. And when we graph this, we'll still get the same curve. Why? Because you can imagine when you want to graph t squared versus when you want to graph u squared, you get this picture. Right? It doesn't matter what the variable that you're using, it's just going to be the different labeling from the axis, but the curve will look the same. And then A to B, we are still going to go from here to here. And in this case, we can see that for this area, that will just be the integral going from A to B of f of u du. And of course, they will be the same because we're talking about the same area. Why is this useful? Why is this confusing? Let me give you guys an example right here. So this is a really classic integral property. I'm going to claim that when we have the integral going from 0 to 1, x to some number a times 1 minus x to some number b dx. This right here is equal to the integral going from 0 to 1 and then x to the b's power times 1 minus x to the a's power dx. Yeah. So let's see how we can prove that. Firstly, let's put on pf for the proof. Let's go ahead and start from the left hand side, the integral going from 0 to 1, x to the a times 1 minus x to the b's power dx. To do this kind of integral property proofs, usually we just need a substitution and then just work it out. So here, let's pick u to be our variable. So this right here will be the dummy variable. And I'm just going to let u equal to the inside, which is 1 minus x. And we see that we have x here. So let's go ahead and solve for x right here. Put this to here, put the u to the other side. x is equal to 1 minus u. And then let's get the dx by differentiating this. The derivative of this is just negative du. Now let's take this integral from the x world to the u world. And remember, these numbers, they are also in terms of x. So, when x is equal to 0, put here 1 minus 0, that will tell us u will begin at 1. And then this is when x is equal to 1, put here 1 minus 1 is 0, so u will be 0 here. x is 1 minus u, and then we will first have this raised to the a power, and next this right here is the u, and then we have that to the b's power, and then the dx is negative du, and it's all multiplication, so let's put on parentheses and then negative du. Cool. All right, we have a negative, we can put it on the outside of the integral, so this is negative integral 
u goes from 1 to u goes to 0 here. And then here, let's just switch the order u to the b times 1 minus u to the a and then du. The negative is already on our side. Cool. But this integral is kind of out of order because we like to have the number right here to be smaller than this number here. Hmm, so what can we do? Thanks to this negative, we can legitimately swap the order of the integration. Well, technically, like the limit of the integration or the bound of the integration. Right? Because the order of integration means when you have like double, triple integral, but that's not what we're doing. Anyway, we can switch these two numbers because of that negative. So we can legitimately say this is the same as the integral when u is beginning at 0 here and then ends at 1. No more negative because we use this to switch that already and then we have the rest. They look almost the same except for the fact that we are using u, u, u here and this is x, x and x here. So what do we do? You might be thinking that, hey, u is 1 minus x, so we should put the 1 minus x back here, back here, and maybe back here. And in fact, that will end up with the original. That's not what we want to do. Here is why we talk about the dummy variable business earlier. The truth is, once you get to this point, you can actually end the proof already, and people are usually okay with that. But if you really want to show that this right here is equal to the right-hand side, you can maybe just use the blue pen and then just write down the integral and then change all the u's to x's and you get x to the b's power times 1 minus x to the a's power and then dx and then this right here will go from 0 to 1. This is okay. Why? Because if you ignore everything that right here, if you just look at the last part, guess what? This is equal to that because what we talked about earlier, every argument so this is indeed equal to that. And again, it's not because we replace this back here. No, we don't do that. It's actually just okay. Once you get to here, you can just write it down. It's kind of confusing, especially if this is like the first time that you are doing integrals or maybe proving integral properties. It is really confusing, right? But this is one of the things that you will have to just get used to it. And it will happen a lot when we are doing this kind of definite integral proofs for their properties. But anyway though, this is indeed equal to that. You know everything else? So in fact, we are done. So let's go ahead and put a box right here and shade it in because we finished the proof. So it deserves a box, all right? For more integral questions, please check out my playlist over there. I'll see you guys over there.